Well, hello everyone. This is Al Fadi, and I want to welcome you back yet again. Uh, I know for the last uh, two days we've been having this marathon of promos for the upcoming conference in October, which is our second annual conference. But uh, the truth is, couldn't have done it without these guys, and uh, especially our brother Christopher, who is here with us. Obviously, I mentioned many times that this conference has three tracks. You can look at those tracks as independent, but obviously. We encourage people to check out all tracks together or maybe two of them at a time if that's what you uh, feel like it. The first track will be on October 14th, which is Thursday. And that one deals with evangelism and discipleship. This one is very secure and you have to be vetted to be able to register for it. So it's not going to be just for anyone. And that's why I encourage people, if you're interested in this particular track, track one, you have to uh, start the process immediately because it will take a while before you will be granted access. Then track two on Friday, one of my favorite as well, and that one has to do with polemics and apologetics. And we will have uh, many uh, wonderful speakers and teachers that many of you on the YouTube world are familiar with, like Dr. Jay Smith, uh, Anthony Rogers, Sam Shimon, Dr. Tony Costa, for track one, we are going to have workers who are serving the Lord in hard places, especially in the Arabian Peninsula and Saudi Arabia, and we're going to have some Saudi uh, Arabian believers, including myself. Now we get to track three, and that's why we have these wonderful brothers here. Uh, we have uh, Jake McCandless, and then we have also Christopher Manti, whose sole really ministry and focus is always on end times and the role of the church. And we wanted it to be a unique approach. I know whenever we mention end times, people think about prophecies. People think sometimes about geopolitical uh, issues. Well, that's, that's true. But we want the focus at the end of the day, when you attend that track, to learn something about the urgency in terms of the role of the church in reaching the loss, in this case, Arabs, Muslims, Middle Easterns, however you want to call it. And that's why I asked the, our two brothers here to join me just to shed some light on their talks as a teaser. So we'll start with you, Jake. Welcome. Well, I just want to say absolute honor. Love your work. Love your ministry. Um, and I just got to tell this, you mentioned security. Uh, so I had the chance to speak at a conference with you. Of course, they were very tight in security. And uh, I wasn't thinking about it. I showed up with my my book table. Uh, in a, in a box. I'm really willing it in. And so my, my first book was called Spiritual Prepper. And so our table will have gas mask and ammo containers and all these things, this prepper aspect to, to spiritual life. And I come rolling with that into security. Didn't think about it. And they pop it open and it's full of gas mask and ammo cans. And, the, you know, as you can imagine, I had to get uh, vetted a bit more. Uh, but so I hope so I won't bring that into the, the conference. But I would say just a great honor. That, and, that explains why they separated you from me that day. That, that's right. right. That's why I never got to, <laughs> to see you. <laughs> that's right. No, I mean, absolutely, absolutely beautiful uh, because I, I know me, me and Pastor Manti, I know um, the other guests that you have on, on the prophecy track. Uh, we really see the the center stage of what's going to happen in the end of the age is in the Middle East. And it's a collision course that's already there, but it's building and building. Um, as you look at the most unreached area, the 1040 window, the Middle East, Northern Africa, we look where the Antichrist, we, we believe, likely going to rise from that, that area. You, you see Israel there. Where do we need to go to finish the Great Commission? It's all there in one spot. And it's, it's going to be a collision. That's where we're headed. And uh, this this conference, this lineup runs the gamut of all of those factors coming in. I think someone has a chance to especially get through all, all these modules are going to get a, a kind of full spectrum of, of how to be prepared of, of this collision course that's happening. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much. And uh, uh, we want to remind people, of course, that if you want information about the conference, it's down at the bottom of this video at the description box. You can see a banner right here in front of you right now. You see the line and you see the uh, access, which is our website, zerointernational.com forward slash 2021 dash conference. Reach out to me if you couldn't find the info through my website, Zero International. So Jake, wh what is the focus of your talk going to be about? Yeah, well, I, th I think the angle comes from, I come from a pastoral heart. I've been a pastor for now 20 years. 
And so everything I do involving talking about prophecy comes from wanting to get the bab- the Bible accurate. Uh, but then even maybe along as much as that, if not more, is the heart that uh, his people uh, would not only be prepared with it for that, but, but would shine, not just survive, but but shine as these difficult times are now and, and, and coming. And so the talk that we're going to be having is called Overlook Prophecies and Their Connection to the Antichrist. And so, like you mentioned, when we think prophecy, we think antichrist. We think these geopolitical things. We think these these great, uh, you know, uh, environmental events and all, all these wild things. Uh, but there are just as many prophecies that deal with the faith and unity of the church when they get to this process. And so, a, as the door is cracked open to talk about uh, some of these geopolitical events, the rise of the antichrist, the deception that comes with that, uh, then we want to follow that up with the saying, okay, on the home front in our hearts and in our communities of believers, these are the challenges scripture says we're going to face. And so we want to try to tie in, finish it, fulfilling that, that picture of the events that are going to happen. Uh, but then look at these overlooked prophecies of that impact. I, th- I think probably impact us even more so than, than maybe the bigger things we think about when we think about prophecy. Amen, brother. Amen. Sounds very interesting. Pastor Manti. Um, why don't you uh, share a little bit about your ministries, you too, you know, the online church, and then tell us a little bit about your talk as well. Well, th- thank you, brother Al Fadi. Uh, great, great honor, man. Anything we can do to, to work together uh, with you and your folks, I always love to do it. And so I hope everyone watching this gets to this conference and is a part of it because it's really, really going to be something special. I think the Holy Spirit is going to use us. Uh, in a big way and use you in a big way for participating. Um, so, right, I'm here in my actual church office uh, here in Iron Faith Fellowship, uh, where I'm the associate pastor. Um, but as you mentioned, I also have an online church that Jake and I pioneered three years ago now, three and a half years ago, poignantly, uh, it's called End Time Church. Yeah, it's crazy, right? You should be much older by now. Um, but, uh, so it's 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 been on our hearts ever since you know, before COVID and before all these crazy things have happened in the world uh, to have this online expression of the gathering of believers. And that, that has always, always, always been my driving force is to network the church together is to provide space uh, where we can meet regardless of where we live, what our backgrounds are, you know, um, any of that stuff, we, we should be one in Christ. And so I take that very seriously, very literally. Um, So I just, that's my bottom line heart for, everything really uh, that I've done. And so um, even in the book that I wrote, not to hawk a book here, but when I wrote Fleet to the Mountains, this is exactly what the point of it was, which was the church's role in these events. It's not just that this is going to happen. This is going to happen. It's not about scaring people. God's not about confusing us or scaring us or, or any of that stuff. He wants us to have his heart and he wants us to bring that gospel to the ends of the earth, even if it seems like it's impossible. That's what he loves to do, right? He loves to show himself powerful in those circumstances. So if we're willing to go, if we're willing to just obey and to go where he sends us, then it's going to be an awesome, miraculous, fantastic time uh, unparalleled in, in history. So um, what what I'm going to speak about uh, when the conference rolls around is very much on point to that, which is we know this this great deception is coming. So when it does come, we're going to have to process something that I don't think we necessarily are planning on, which is why he will allow it because there's a great deception coming, right? We second Thessalonians two, obviously Matthew 24, even Habakkuk in the old Testament um, really zooms in on this fact that um, we're going to be very shocked as a church. If we don't process why God is allowing this thing to happen, because it's going to look pretty hard, right? It's going to look pretty difficult. And we're going to maybe see, uh, you know, friends going through very hard things and martyrdom and all these things. But why would God allow it? And so that's what I'm going to hopefully try to present clearly. Um, what it's called when God permits the greatest deception to prosper. And I think, you know, Alfadi would obviously speak to it much more intelligently than I can. But um, when a, a alternate belief system, an alternate false religion uh, has set up globally, this um, process is already laid out, right? What what they're expecting, what they're going to accomplish, what God what God is going to allow them to do. What if the real and true God, Jesus the Messiah, 
uh, what if he actually allows their version of events to play out? That is a very deceptive situation all of a sudden, right? Because now we Christians are going to think, well, wait a minute. Their things are coming true. Maybe they're right all along, right? There, so this is something very, very uh, urgent I think we have to think about and get through. And I hope uh, that this presentation uh, at this uh, conference will shed some light and hopefully give us some action points how to address it. Hey Amen. I mean, it's kind of exciting. Of course, uh, hopefully people will now uh, eagerly wait with anticipation what the talk might be. Uh, certainly, it's kind of interesting that the God of Islam identified himself as the great deceiver. Uh, so uh, we, we uh, don't worry, I'll help you find the connection. Uh, we'll, we'll do that <laughs> uh, during, the, uh, during the show. Uh, again, we are talking about the upcoming conference, uh, which is the um, uh, our second annual uh, CIRA International online conference. Some of you are asking if it is in person or online. It is online. And by the way, even though it's online, even if someone could not attend, I mean, sometimes uh, it could, something comes up, maybe the, 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 the timing is different or the time zone uh, where you live, or let's, God forbid, uh, internet issues, you will still receive recordings of all sessions. So you're not going to miss a beat. So we want you to be comfortable knowing that it's not going to be going to waste. So again, you can register to it. Look at the banner that is uh, strolling right now in front of you on the screen, sierrainternational.com forward slash 2021-conference. But also for more information, look at the description box right below this promo video, and you will learn more about the tracks uh, and also the uh, esteemed speakers that we will have, including these two brothers here. And this is why I love uh, to bring them on board when it comes to end times, because I like to bring a twist. Sometimes I feel like I am kind of like putting them in a in a predicament here because I'm taking him out of the comfort zone and talking about it from a different angle. But but we want really to honor the word of God. God's prophecy applies to Muslims and geopolitical events and everything else is happening. And keep in mind, we have. 2,000 years behind us now that few things are shaping up already, and uh, we probably can speak into it from that angle. Last words, fo uh, folks. Anything else you want to add to this? Uh, I would just want to say before I cut Jake off there, the, the, the Great Commission is never going to change. Uh, when, okay. when we have to take the gospel to the end of the earth and, and the loss to be saved, to give them the opportunity to, to show them that, yes, there is a God, and yes, he's real, and yes, he loves them, and yes, he died on the cross and rose on the third day, and he's coming back again. They have to hear that, regardless of what their attitude is now towards us as the church, right? Um, it's going to have to be fulfilled. So God is looking for people who will do it. I think that's the bottom line of what gets me excited. Amen. Uh, and I'm absolutely fired up about this opportunity. As you said, it, it is a twist. It's, it's a mix. Uh, but I think it's how it needs to be because I, I get so frustrated because prophecy is not dealt with when it's uh, anywhere from a quarter to a third of, of what we have in scripture. And so I feel like someone getting, doing all the modules, if they can do that, that they're getting, again, the, the, the full spread of what's coming, what, how we need to be prepared and, and being in the full part of the story with that. And I, I also, my heart is, is speaking these things to maybe someone who isn't tracking uh, with those. And that's, that's been my heartbeat because, you know, hey, a lot of people may sign up and go to a, a prophecy only a conference because they, they're into that type of thing. Uh, but I think we've got to bring it into everything. And uh, I wrote a, a children's book called Jesus and His White Horse, aimed at, at speaking uh, this to, to kids and trying to make it in a way that we all can understand. And so that, that's my heartbeat. But I, I think I just feel like it's, it's just a beautiful opportunity to get uh, what's going on now, what's going on in, in the future, and just getting that full story of how God's working and where he's moving. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much to both of you. But before we close... I'll be remiss to say that uh, Pastor Manti is the brain behind the technical operation. Uh, uh, I'm the muscle, he's the brain. Uh, so uh, that's that, there, there's no so brain we're, being, uh, we're being asked uh, here about the schedule. Uh, uh, you know, uh, Chris, uh, when people register, they'll get an exposure to the start time and end time. Uh, is that correct? Uh, absolutely. The full schedule yeah. is up uh, at the yeah. conference login. So if yeah. you go to register, you will see the entire schedule, what times, who's doing what, when. The whole thing is there. All right. And it, it will last, the conference, the track will last between three to four hours, give or take. You know, that's uh, just roughly right now. I'm, I'm just going off the top of my head. You see what's going on at the top of my head. So uh, that's, uh, that's the info I can give you. 
All right, everyone. Well, thank you so much, uh, brothers. I am really looking forward to it. And uh, yesterday I had Daniel here also, and he talked about, uh, you know, Prophet Jesus. And uh, uh, it's going to be interesting as well because he's uh, basically meeting our Muslim friends at the level that they acknowledge Christ and taken up from there. So we look yeah. forward to this track, everyone. We encourage you to uh, take advantage of this. Uh, at some point at the beginning of October, we're going to end up closing the registration because there's a lot of work behind the scenes that will require us to sort out things. So uh, it will be distraction for us to do the vetting and other things as well. So I encourage you to look into registering as soon as possible, especially for track one, because it requires a security clearance, if you wish, and a vetting process. All right, brothers, thank you so much for your time. I look forward to serving the Lord with you. Thank you, everyone. This is Al-Fadi over and out. God bless you. Thanks.